Hey doing everyone, it's Joe here from Limit the Learn. Um, I'm back with another community questions one. This is a shout out to Keith Anderson. Ooh, excuse the bedhead. A shout out to Keith Anderson. Um, he asked a question on the, the Live and to Learn forum, the Live and to Learn community forum, um, about a recent trip that the, the, the Live and to Learn crew were on up the Morn Mountains. And he wanted to know what kit we carried. Um, uh, hopefully further down the road there's uh, in the background now there's works of a website where um, we'll all have personal blogs and the big guest bloggers and stuff like that so we can get a little bit more in depth but rather than answering um, individual questions or guys putting up because there was eight of us on that trip guys putting up their individual kits we decided to do the top 10 or top 9 or whatever it is best crossover kits and what I mean about crossover is uh, Although most of us are predominantly bushcrafters, our kits are mainly crossover kits, which means that we can camp on beaches with them, we can camp up summits, because we don't like to spend all our time in the forest. Life's too short for that. Get, you know, It's nice to get out and experience different places and the skill sets and challenges that camping in these places would bring. So we got together, we bumped heads, and hopefully Keith and whoever may decide to find this interesting, there might be some bits of info in here for you. But basically, I'm going to be talking about crossover gear and crossover kits and one thing that I'd love to get across to people it, when you're building your kit an invaluable resource is the second hand trade pages not so much to find bargains yes it is great to find bargains but just to watch what kit comes up a great indicator of stuff that doesn't work or stuff that people aren't happy with is the stuff that comes up for sale nobody's going to sell stuff that they're happy with I personally don't, but maybe other people will, and that's how you get your bargains. But you'll start seeing stuff come up over and over again because people have bought them, used them, don't like them, sold. Bought it, used it, don't like it, sold. And if you keep enough tabs on these things, spend a few minutes every other day looking through these pages, going on and just physically scrolling through them, you will see the same items coming up for sale over and over again. Um, the, you're looking at, like say for example, you can see my term rest here behind me, which I'll talk about in a minute. One thing that you will see is you will never see the full length pro lights come up. Yes, they do, but rarely. But one thing you will see all the time coming up is the three quarter length pads, the three quarter length ultra light pads, because they have problems, which I'll talk about in the future. But that's a good indication of people may not like that kit, that it's not the, the best way to go. You'll see um, surplus military kit come up because an awful lot of people will buy it just to get started, but it is not really the best of kit. Some of it is good, but it's not really the most comfortable. It's not really the lightest. Um, it's not the best crossover kit by no stretch of the imaginations. Um, what else would you see? Things like um, uh, sabers, you know, um, the carry more saber comes up an awful lot. Um, three quarter length pants come up an awful lot. Um, ultra light kit, super super ultra light kit comes up an awful lot because it's quite pricey and it it's very hard to find good crossover kits if you're a bushcrafter. Yes, some of them do, but um, things like ultra light bags and stuff like that can 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 do that. So that's just a, a little word of advice. You don't have to take um, my word for anything here, but you can do your own research and you will see um, on the second hand pages and on the buy and sell pages. The, the same kit coming up over and over again of people buying them and not use them and it's a great indicator to of stuff to avoid not to be bad to the people trying to sell these things on but it's a good indicator of if if a certain piece of equipment is constantly popping up on the second hand pages it, it's it's kind of a good indicator that it's not cutting the mustard for whatever reason if it's a bushcraft buy and sell page and you're getting the same bit of kit over and over again it's a good indication that maybe it's not fit for purpose for bushcraft but Without that on, that's pro tip, pro tip number one. We're going to dive in. So the crossover kit I'm going to be talking about is the top 10 items that there was eight of us on that trip and out of the eight of us, all of us carried these things. Yes, different brands in various forms, but all of us had these yokes which allowed us to camp. In fact, and soon enough we're doing a two-day camp where one will be a summit and one will be a forest and we'll both be carrying the same kit and we're going to, the challenge is trying to, to walk out which is the best crossover to be able to camp in both scenarios so we'll start from the car and we'll walk away the first thing you want to look at is a bag this is my one it's the Fial Raven Keika um, 75 plus 10 75 plus 10 this bag is a little outdated in fact if you were to ask me now would I say this is a good crossover bag no is it a predominantly a forest bag 
yes because it is um, rugged and it's made out of a good strong material and it's got lots of extras that make it easy to use in the woods but i bought this bag many years ago and there's a new range of bags out now um, from all makers that are crossover bags more more and more makers are seeing that people want to do um, more than just one specific thing now yes there is purpose built things out there and if you're a pur if you're a if that's what you're into that's fine there is hiking bags ultralight hiking bags there is super rugged forest bags but there's a starting to amass a beautifully big crossover area in these brands the tips that i would say when when buying a bag um regardless of what brand it is you're looking for something that's going to be rugged on the hard wearing parts the fial raven abisco is a great example of this um gregory do one and um I'm trying to think of Osprey. I think Van Gogh do one too. Where it is hard on the bottom, you've got your super light stuff up the middle. Um, it's light where it needs to be light and it's tough where it needs to be tough. The Abisco being a fine example. It is a beautiful crossover bag. If you're in the forest and you're on the beaches and you're up the mountains, you want to avoid um, possibly bags like the Osprey. My brother has an Osprey Kestrel 48. He's been using it for about two years now. And it's already starting to show signs of wear from snagging on branches and you know being put down on rough floors and stuff like that whereas this bag is nearly four year old and bar a bit of damage on the front where i ripped the ski pole out of it and um, it, it's totally fine another great tip that i found is buy big and um, there seems to be this <coughs> romanticism or disillusion around having a small bag that the the smaller the bag the smaller the kit the, for some reason you're going to have a super magic and um, fantastic time which is cool i mean at the end of the day goal zero is what we're all after it's the, the magnum opus for everybody but when it comes to buying a bag we'll talk about it like construction machinery um machinery when used is is has a safe working load and um, for bags we'll call it a comfortable working load so a 75 liter bag will very comfortably if it's designed for purpose carry um 15 kilos quite easily like but it's marked to be able to carry 20 kilos but when you put 20 kilos into a 20 ki a bag designed to carry 20 kilos you will feel it beyond a shadow of a doubt you will feel it like because you're pushing that bag to its very limits and when it comes time to packing and stuff like that unless you're very careful with it you will push the bag into very uncomfortable territory i have it my own and i see people do it on every trip when i'm out so if you carry a 35 liter load um you're best off going with a 55 liter bag just to give yourself that comfortableness and in, in fact nearly every trip i go out with now i carry an oversized bag just because i've seen how comfortable it can be if i'm rocking out on a bushcraft overnight i won't try and cram it all into a 25 liter bag i'll put it into a 50 liter bag gives me extra space if i want to bring any accoutrements but it means that when i put that on the bag is actually carrying under what it was designed for i am comfortable the walk is comfortable it's a win-win so look for a crossover bag one that's hard where you need it, one that's soft where you need it to be, and buy bigger than the load you're carrying. It doesn't have to be 50% bigger than the load you're carrying. If you're carrying a 55 litre load, a 65 litre bag would be good, a 65 litre load, a 75 litre bag would be good, and so on. 100 litre bags are too big, unless you're doing that type of stuff, but a 100 litre bag, it, it, they're, they're massive and they're, they're more designed for working in conjunction with other systems that you carry. The sweet spot would be kind of between 65 and 85 you get a good four or five days in fact I've, I've spent 10 10 plus days walking out of that bag so you can be quite comfortable there next one would be boots um an awful lot of us wear tundras call them ready um said they're like the more boots but you can wear whatever whatever boot you want but the the one thing i'd recommend um if you're looking for a crossover boot is is possibly avoiding leather i know people out there love their leather boots they're very expensive they're like 300 quid most of my kit isn't over the 100 euro mark 150 euro mark these are only about 80 euro um but there's many boots out there like them now they've got good ankle support they're tall you will notice um a difference if you've ever worn these um tight boots these are only shin high boots they're not exactly massive but you will notice the lack of support when you go back to an ankle in fact over the weekend only for most of the guys were wearing um, shin high boots there would have been many a twisted ankle these are Gore-Tex 
I avoid leather for um I spend time in snow and if you get leather wet and stuff like that and you can you try and dry it out by the fire or dry it out too quickly they can shrink or they can expand they can warp um, so Gore-Tex works fine for me they're minimal maintenance I try and keep all my kit minimal maintenance and um, the less I got to worry about what I have to do with it the better like so as you can see these are fairly dirty fairly robust I will get around to cleaning them but there's no major panic I'll give them a brush down with a cloth I might check their waterproofness because it's been about six months hit them with a bit of fab seal psh, 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 psh. jobs are good back in the car they go till I need them next time being a crossover boot they are they are light they're tough where I need them to be up around the toes they've got a reinforced ankle they are insulated but they breathe it's actually pinsulate here on the inside I've walked around in five inch snow in these and my feet have been absolutely toasty I'm able to take them off put them next to the fire don't have to worry about them shrinking Gore-Tex is a nice option there's a reason why most of the military and stuff like that do offer um, hybrid boots crossover boots again half leather half Gore-Tex in fact that'd be a perfect mix but for me my budget allows me this these can be picked up again maybe 65 70 euro on Amazon if you find a good deal they're not a bad one but that's again a crossover boot something you're looking for forest sole light upper body for trekking tough where you need it to be tough and 100 percent waterproof if you don't trust your boots a good thing to buy is seal skin socks waterproof socks i actually haven't got them out with me at the moment but not only do they act as a, as a waterproof layer my brother wears um seal skin socks all the time they're very breathable but it does give you that extra bit of protection should you land in water most boots are only waterproof up to here and if not tied properly water will get through the tongues so instead of waterproof socks yes seal skins are expensive if you go to base camp and stuff like that they're usually about the 60 euro mark but you can pick them up from surplus stores or if you know any good surplus retailers you can get the um issued ones for five or ten euro which is what i use knee high waterproof great great addition if you can only buy a cheap boot if all your budget allows you to buy is a cheap boot, double it up with a pair of waterproof socks, a pair of really nice waterproof socks, and you will gain all the advantages of this um, uh, on a budget. So there you go. So that's another one. Doesn't have to be mad expensive, but keep your feet dry. If you're going to buy a regular uh, run-of-the-mill boot, get yourself a waterproof sock and gain, gain that waterproofness. Next one up, just because my hand landed on it, is my sleep pad. Does it have to be a Tamarest? No. But most of the guys carry a Tamarest in, and it's usually one of those, you buy it once and you don't have to buy it again. I know Davey rocks an X-Bed, an Expedition bed, which is a really nice bit of kit and serves him really well. But the reason why I say um, Tamarest, this is a pro light. It's full length. Like, again... You don't you rarely see the full length Tamarisk come up on the second hand market. The one thing you do see come up on the second hand market all the time is the three quarter length ones. So this is why I carry the full length ones. I don't have to worry about insulating my lower feet. I'm not going to be feeling that dip in the bag. Make sure it has some form of insulation in it. The reason why I don't rock sole um, air mattresses like the, the, see the Summit Neo Air. Uh, or the Tamarest Neo Air, I might have got the France confused there, it's because they are, literally the clue is in the name, they are air. When that air in that pad gets cold, your body heat will not heat it up, it'll actually become really hard, whereas a foam filled one has less air in it, less air to get cold. So that's why I go with the foam filled ones. This isn't inflated, I only have the valve open because it's not cool to store. But these can rip and you still gain from it. In fact, the cheaper Tamarests, although bulkier, are actually a lot more robust and um, I've seen them rip I've had them rip on me personally and you can still use them whereas the air mattress ones and um, the, the ultralight and um, summit hiking ones when they rip you have to repair them you have to carry your repair kit whereas at least with these you can you can still use them if they're torn you can still sleep comfortably on them again being a good crossover kit this is super tough material on the bottom in fact i've slept with this just on the ground I, I i actually have used this pad an awful lot you can see she's got battle scars i've had this since the very start it's one of the very first bits of kit i ever bought and it hasn't hasn't failed me so go full length if you can find one but go full length carrying the extra four inches of weight isn't going to make a difference to what your load out is but it will make a huge difference to how you sleep 
and that's the most important thing when being out in the woods. Full length and make sure it has foam, foam insulation. Nice crossover kit. We all rock them. You can ask people on the page um, what specific model they use. The next one would be a gas cooker and gas. Gas has a bit of a bad rip. Um, most people, especially some at campers, would prefer trying to use an oil based stuff, but they're, they're too heavy and they are too um, specific for me. There's a great site called Zen Stoves. I'm not going to go in about the ins and outs of gas and stuff like that. Zenstoves.com, I think it is. Um, they have everything. Everything you, any question you could ever ask about any type of gas, any brand of gas, transients, fireboxes, all the questions are answered there. But get yourself one of these if you're looking for a nice crossover bit of kit. It's a little mini gas stove. People have seen it in other videos. It does not have to be a super expensive, lightweight titanium lad like my one and some of the guys carry. Just my rule of thumb is buy cheap, use it for a year. If you really like it and you used it a lot, then buy expensive. Don't go straight in and buy expensive. My very first stove was only 15 euro. It was about that size, about that wide. And I loved it. And only for it packed in, I'd probably still be using it. But these are a great one for crossover kits. If you're a bushcrafter or a hill walker or a kayaker, whatever it may be, to get a brew going, sterilize water. It's nice to just sit down and have a cup of coffee Boil some water up if you're cold at night. So for your sleeping bag, for your heat pad, they're a good one. Next one would be a water filter. Again, whatever water filter you choose to buy, that's um, no problem there, but a water filter made it into our top 10 kit choices. Um, most of us, in fact, I think all of us, um, at the Living to Learn crew carry this one. It's tried and tested. I've had this, I've been using Sawyer, not this particular one, but I've had this since I started. It's proved itself time and time again on multiple day trips. In fact, when I, I knew it was a good one when I was on a trip um, for six days and there was three of us and I was the only one with a water filter and it done nine liters a day for those six days for all three people and extra when we needed to cook. They're about 25 quid, available all over the place. And I mean, you can pick them up cheaper. They're the most adaptable one I've seen. The MSR MicroPures and the more expensive Catadyne <coughs> ceramic filters <coughs> that you have to pump. Um, maybe they come with adapters and stuff like that that cost extra on top of the 140 euro price tag that they already carry. With this for 30 quid, it allows you to go straight onto um, regular sports bottles. It fits in um, Coke bottles, Volvic bottles, Ballygown bottles, Mount Fuji water bottles, whatever you, you your standard fitting bottle may be. Um, in fact, Bernard um, carries Volvic bottles with him, just scoops up some water and the lake screws this on, squeezes it straight into his face, or um, you can just filter it straight from the squeezy bottle when you need to do it. There's also, a for a very small price, you can attach it to a camel black bladder and just drink it from source as you're moving around. Um, filtering sediment does help them, it will help any filter, but they will work in a pinch. So again, a good crossover kit whether you're a bushcraft or summit camper, having this, it's maybe just a little bit bigger than a big lighter, but can make a world of difference to a trip. It also comes with bags, a 500 mil bag. I do recommend getting these ones. Again, unlike the Life Straw and stuff like that, it's not compatible with bags. Um, I personally despise the Life Straw when it comes to, to this type of stuff. Well, it was, it was good at the time, but like my bag, times have moved on, filters have moved on. There's better options out there now. So like, for example, these are kind of bladder based bags. How you use the sawyer is you screw these on and you squeeze, it's a pressure based filter. But these allow me to stop at a river. This is a two liter one and a one liter one. I'm able to fill these up and because they're a bladder, they're malleable. So I don't have to worry about being able to put them in a pocket. I can literally slide them down my bag, sit them on top of my bag, squeeze them in any way I can and carry water on the go and purify when I need to get there later. In fact, if I could recommend a single piece of kit out of this top 10 yoke that would do everybody in any field of the outdoors this would this would be the man that'd be that one there next up would be a first aid kit needs no introduction that's there tailor made them in fact they should be on there i'm surprised that these don't appear in everybody's top 10 gear list but we have first aid posts and stuff like that next would be walking sticks now i know some of you are going to some of you may laugh and think that's a bit naff but Walk sticks are a great purpose and they're a great crossover bit of kit. If you're a bushcrafter and you like tarping, 
these are fantastic for um, tarp setups on the fly especially if you end up in a place with little to no trees and you want to save cordage I'm very big on saving cordage these are these are nice um, for setting up your tarp the thing I have found the most is the Littles and Aldi's ones you don't have to go out and buy big <laughs> Littles and Aldi's do fantastic ones and they, in fact some of them would put the big names to shame this is a DD a DD checking pole and I absolutely despise it it's a twist and lock but you cannot get it tight enough when I am walking along and propelling myself with it that these locks will eventually twist open I'll go to stab it in the ground and it'll collapse and I, I'm actually very disappointed in, in DD and that product this is a Littles one part of a set that cost me all of five euro but it doesn't have the twisty locks it just has one clip lock up here and the pole can extend and come down and they're an absolute gift and the reason why they're a great crossover kit besides the tarps and that is these do make a huge difference especially when carrying a heavy load no matter how good your bag is if um, you're using these they act as a load stabilizer when you're carrying in excess of 10 to 12 kilos your bag will rock you may not notice it no matter how good your bag is your bag will rock and what will happen is you you are landing extra weight onto either hip and onto your knee so when you're carrying a bag you you multiply your weight or you add your weight and the weight of your bag and multiply it by four and that's the weight that's landing on each knee and each hip the whole time you're out walking these trekking poles um, when used help keep that load stabilized and help keep that weight centered over your um, gravity traveling down through the center and you will notice you will gain miles you will actually gain miles by using walking poles because you're putting less fatigue less stress less risk of twisting an ankle and a knee out of it and like my tent for example is um, a trekking pole based tent so I have them with me all the time anyway and great for tarps nice crossover kit don't break the bank they're not as naff as people think they do make a huge difference that leads me on to my tent which is yeah the tent is probably the most ultimate crossover kit. This is the Sierra Designs um, flashlight one. I never store anything compressed. In fact, I very rarely compress anything, but it's a fantastic tent. It's very light. It's about 200 quid. I'm not saying you have to buy this, but there is purpose-built tents. This is kind of a middle of the road. We'll get you out of a, um, a situation in a pinch. It's predominantly a trail tent, but I've had it out in high winds and stuff recently, and it done the job. You can buy a Van Gogh one, but the one thing are, are um, uh, many of the makers out there, you can see here. The reason why I'm going to talk about it is you're looking for something that gives you the most amount of height for what you're doing and comes with a bucket floor. If weight isn't an issue for you, that is fine. You don't have to go out and buy an ultralight tent. But the reason why I say height is, is because you can end up spending an awful lot of time in that piece of kit. Tarps are great, I love tarps. I tamp, I, I tamp, I camp predominantly in tarps, but it's nice to have that tent there for when I want to rock up to a beach or I'm going somewhere unknown. For example, there's a, um, a two day camp coming up in the near future where we are going to do one summit, one forest, and it's a no brainer for which bit of kit to carry to that in the crossover kit section. It's gotta be a tent. The reason why I say it's gotta be high is because you get a rainy day, you can get a rainy two days, which has happened to me, and you can end up living inside that yoke. I used to have a Van Gogh Sole 200, which is only about two feet high off the ground and long, and having to spend two days eating and getting changed and sleeping in a tent that small is um, masochist. It's, it's not a fun time um, at all. For example, recently, there was um, a bit of a, an emergency at night, and I had to get out of the tent to help in the, in the damp, in the mist, and, and in the rain. And I had to dive back into my tent in the wee hours, kind of disorientated. But I'm six foot two, and you can see I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy, but I can actually physically sit up in that tent, change my clothes, and do what I gotta do. <clears throat> and that's that's where you want. If I can recommend you anything, whatever tent you choose to buy, just make sure it's got some height and a vestibule in the side of it. So if it's raining, you can cook, you can keep your gear outside of your tent, which is especially if it's raining, and you're able to sit up in it, read a book, change your clothes, if you have to go into a shop to sit in a tent and physically try it, do. Base Camp in Town is actually a fantastic, um, in Dublin city centre, is a fantastic shop because they have a floor where all the tents are set up that they stock and you can physically sit in them and try them out. Don't be afraid to do it. It's a very important piece of kit. It's your money. Test this stuff out to the best. Next of all would be a bivvy. 
just isn't par for the course, but it's a fantastic bit of kit. This is the MMS um, American Bivy. I like it because it's super sturdy, has zippers. I've had this since the very beginning too. This is one of my original bits of kit that I've owned, but it stops you getting into trouble. Like for example, on a summer camp, if you're dealing with high winds or possibly a tent failure, which um, unless it's a very purpose built tent can happen, you've got a means of, of staying warm. Um, I've, I've, I was caught out once where I really, really wished I had a bivy bag and I didn't have it with me. And now this goes near enough everywhere I need to go, especially if you're under a tarp and, and stuff like that. It's a great crossover bit of kit. If you're fishing, throw it in your bag. It's a great line of defense if you're um, trail hiking and stuff like that. A great crossover bit of kit. There's 101 bivy bags out there. It really comes down to personal preference. The one thing I will say is avoid anything with jungle written on it because they don't breed. You're looking for Gore-Tex. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but this is a, a piece of kit that you don't want to cheap out on. Um, if it takes a little while to save up a bit more and to get a more sturdier um, purpose-built one, a tried and field tested purpose-built one, well then do that. That's the one thing I'd recommend. But a great piece of emergency kit and a great piece of bushcraft kit when you want to sleep out under the stars or you want to, you want to go minimalist, it's fine. So mountain, forest, crossover. A bivy bag is a good one. So I think that's... I think that's it. I think I've covered most of it. Sorry I couldn't type that, Keith. As you can see, it's nearly a 30 minute video if you have all stayed this far. I really appreciate it. Hope you've had a cup of coffee and, and a chance to chill. But the community questions videos are really good. Bernard's got one coming out now um, for a couple of people who have gotten in touch with him and asked. Don't be afraid to get in touch with us and, and ask these questions if you, maybe you, you, you might be a forum person. Um, we'll do our best, as you can see, we'll do our very best to answer what we can. So, um, yeah, keep on keeping on and thanks for being a part of this community. It's a, it's still a great fun. Joe from Learn. Out.